I'm delighted to be joined by a titan of the Conservative Party, Michael Fabricant, who has been the MP for Litchfield since 1982. Michael brought his experience as Joint Managing Director of an international broadcasting electronics and investment group to shake up Westminster. In 2017, he came out as bisexual and has been very open about his relationship. He's also survived a battle with cancer after being diagnosed with prostate and skin cancer back in 2015. But he hasn't let it slow him down. I'm pleased to say that Michael Fabricant joins me now. Michael, nice to see you. Really good to Lovely see you. Lovely to see you again. God, you make me sound like a survivor. The cancer thing was actually incredibly straightforward. The oh, was it? We, we, we whipped the prostate out. Actually, it turned out that it wasn't yet cancerous. Uh, but anyway, it might have gone that way. And the other thing is, well, I just get too much sun. And uh, I have a marvellous lady, lady in Burton-on-Trent who looks at me every six months. And if there's anything suspicious, she whips it off. But oh, yes. I'm not on any medication. I never <laughs> have been. <laughs> Interestingly put. <laughs> so, Michael, talk to me then, because, you know, that you make light of the idea that the cancer may not have progressed, but it's good that you caught it early, and that, that you know, that's, it's, it's good. The, the technology that we've moved forward with in science is uh, saving lots of lives. Talk to me about your reason, though. Why did you get into politics in the first place? What made you do it? Well, I sort of went to university for years and years and years, and uh, including doing stuff in medicine as well. So by very interested in your last interview, which was Chris Smith talking about mRNA vaccines and how they'll be able to identify that sort of common DNA and RNA that exists in, uh, in uh, viruses, but uh, particularly in flu viruses. But how did I get involved? I, so I, as you said in your introduction, set up radio and television stations. And it was two things that happened, actually. The first thing was that uh, I was over in Uganda, in Kampala, and we were competing against other countries who were also trying to win this radio, big radio contract there, which was funded by the United Nations. And I could see what the Germans were doing and I could see what the Americans and other countries were doing and their embassies were saying, well, if this company gets the contract, we will, you know, give you free education in Germany or America or Japan or whatever. And I went to the British High Commission in Kampala and I didn't get very far, actually. And uh, the guy I was talking to, you know, really didn't have much of an interest in those days. And uh, when I got back to the UK, I wrote to my MP and he got me a meeting with the trade minister at that time. And I was talking to him and I was that he was glazing over, probably like your viewers are now. And uh, I said to him, well, you don't understand anything about export, do you? You're a you're a ruddy barrister. You've never sold anything in your life. And he said, look. Because it's pe people like you became MPs, then perhaps we would have people, you know, who knew something about business. So that was the first thing that got me interested. But the second reason was that I also was applying for a radio license for a commercial radio station. Mm. And the chairman of the group was a guy called Jeffrey Johnson Smith, who was an MP and had been a television presenter back in the 50s and the 60s, long time ago, but great guy. And we used to have political discussions, and he also said, look, you should actually think sometime of becoming an MP. And what happened eventually was that an American company made a bid for my company, and uh, my partner, my business partner, became uh, ran a tennis club. He bought a tennis club in Brighton, and I became an MP. Wow. Rather, a, rather, rather an involved sort of uh, explanation, but I hope that makes some sort of sense. Now, now you've, you've always been very open about your sexuality and you've come out as being bisexual. I mean, me personally, I don't care what, what somebody is. They can do whatever they like. It's none of my business. But for you, has, has coming out in this way affected your political career at all? No, I don't think so. I mean, I've not made any big announcement about it, but um, I think a lot of people know that I've been very friendly for 33 years with Andy Street. First mm -hmm. of all, when he was a trainee at John Lewis, then he ran John Lewis and Waitrose, and then he ended up being mayor of the West Midlands. And it's quite funny, actually, how the two of us have two, had two very different backgrounds. I was originally from Brighton and worked in radio, and he was originally from Birmingham and worked in retail. And yet now he's in the West Midlands, and so am I. And we're both that dreaded word, politician. I hate that. I prefer the Americans who always talk about legislators. Now, listen, Michael, I've got to ask you. I'm wearing a wig. Are you? 
No. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not. <laughs> so, what, what, so, because you told me before that, that, that you called it enhancements, you'd undergone enhancements of the follicular area. What does that mean? It means it's follicularly enhanced. <laughs> That's it, yeah. Is it stuck on or? <laughs> I love it. I love it. You, next time you and I meet for a drink, drink, as we occasionally do, I'll let you have a tug. Really? <laughs> See if it comes off. Well, I won't let you tug mine. Mine will be straight of in. my hair. I'll, I'll, I'll jump straight in to get it. <laughs> <laughs> so talk to me then. I mean, look, um, I, you know, would you, if knowing now what you know now, would you ever have become a politician? You know, obviously we can't talk about political stuff because we're in the midst of purdah, but would you... Knowing what you know now, would you have chosen it as a career? Yes, I enjoy it because I remember a mentor of mine was a Labour MP called Gerald Kaufman. And he said to me, Michael, you can reinvent yourself every parliament and you can do different things. So, you know, for a year, two years, I was a shadow trade minister. Well, it's for... quite... We're running out of time. Crack it has gone so quickly. Michael, <laughs> Michael, 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 Michael